Hello, this is Tim. I hope you're keeping well. Um, what lecture are we on now? We're on lecture... Sorry about this. Free form parts number 11. So I'll just copy this to my desktop. And we're going to work through these exercises. Okay, so we have one there. Nothing new really. Two is we're going to we're going to use a, it's like a, a lawn chair uh, made with um tubing and it's bent at various places we're going to use something called a sweep to create that up to create this uh, shape um here's uh, example number three it looks like a bottle example number four looks like a funnel five is a screwdriver and then six is another chair um let me see if i can rotate this for you there you go Number six is a chair, and then seven is this beast of a part. It looks like, um, I don't know what it looks like, some sort of blower, to be quite honest. Anyway, um, let's start with uh, let's start with exercise one. I'm just going to run through them all. Um, the best way to start is with this front um, sketch. We want to replicate this front sketch. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a mid-plane extrude. Okay, so let me just zoom in here for a little bit. The trick is going to be getting these curves. I'm thinking these little these ripples, these waves. So we'll we'll give it a lash and uh, let's give it a go. So I'm just going to create a part. Check that it's inches. Create a sketch on the front plane. Now a good place for this origin. I'm going to stick the origin right in the middle there of that part. So. I'm going to draw a rectangle first, I think. I'll make this point, that line, and that point mid midpoint. Now, what's the total length of this thing? 50. 50 and the height is... Well, let's just get the 50. Okay, the height looks like it's 10. Now we have all these we have this main body, but then there are these little legs that are sticking out. What I want you to do is just forget about those legs for the time being. Just imagine they're not there and let's get this wavy effect. So we got fifty in this one direction. Now hold on a sec. Yeah. Yeah, let's just do it. We make it fifty inches. make this 10 all right now what's next what we want to do is we have five inches here and then we have the start of a curve and then another one and so on so what's let me I'm just trying to think what's the best way of doing this foot radius of five I'm looking for okay I need the detail here we go so we have a radius of 5 here, and then this is a radius of 1.5 here, okay. So let's put this, let's put a circle in. I'm going to make a tangent with that line, and tangent with that line. And I'm going to make this a diameter of 10, okay. And my feeling is, I'd like to... I'd like to do an array of these linear sketch pattern. And let's do the x axis. You'll see what I mean now in a sec. I don't know, I'm after a rain there as well. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Okay, um, now why, if I grab that, is it going to move? Okay, let's make this and that point horizontal, and let's, that's going to be 10, there we go, lovely. Alright, now what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to do a fillet, I think, of 1.5, and I'm going to go from there. Can I do from one to one? Hold on a second. 
sorry about that guys, my, my allergies are driving me crazy at the moment. Alright, um, radius 1.5. Okay, how do we do that? Um, I want to do a sketch fillet. Okay, maybe not. Let's do another circle then. And let's make a tangent to these two. And tangent to there. And then let's have a diameter of three. And that's what it looks like. So I'm going to, excuse me, I'm going to trim that. And trim that. And trim that. And let's put that dimension back in. Now why can't I, why, why will that move? Because I need to make a tangent back again. And tangent here. Okay. And what I can do now is I can trim that. And I can trim that. Now I'm wondering, I can trim that. And I can trim this. And I can trim that now but it's all... It's getting messed messed up now. Why? Okay, I still need this distance from there, and I'm going to use the shift key to there. And I'm going to make that ten. This is kind of it's tricky enough. Um, I'm being lazy. I'd like to pattern this all the way over. Um, let me let me see if I yeah, if I get rid of that, it's going to start shout complaining. Um, okay, let's do this. Let's do a linear sketch pattern. Let's pattern this circle. That's going to be my x-axis. And I'm going to go... The distance will be 10. Alright. And I'm going to go OK. <coughs> now, I have all those. Now what can I do if I make this and that point horizontal, that's good. But I also need to make the distance from there to there, I need to make that 10. Yeah, it's it's not ideal, but um, let's see if I can get rid of all of these. Okay, now let's get rid of some of these dimensions. Now, can I make this and that? I've made that horizontal. Now, what happens if I grab this and want to move it? It doesn't. Can I make this equal? Can I make those equal? Let's try that. It still doesn't help. Um, what happens if I make those two tangent? No, it doesn't like that. And the issue, the issue is with um, this linear sketch pattern. If you're not careful, it can it can give you a lot of some errors. Um, I don't know. Maybe it would have been just easier just to manually draw that in. So let's have a look. I'm just going to go all the way back. I'm going to keep. I'm going to. I'm not going to pattern these. I'm just going to draw it in myself. I'm going to draw four circles. Now I'm wondering, let me, let me just try one other thing here for a sec. I'm wondering if I break that and then put a fillet in of 1.5. Ah, oh, yes, lovely. There we go, now we're talking. Okay, so I trim this first and trim that and that and this. And then I'm just going to use fillets. You know, um, that might not have been too obvious to you. There's an awful lot of different ways of doing this, but that wavy pattern with all those tangents and those curves, one sort, one curve meeting with another curve, it's, it's tricky enough. But that's it, that's what you want. Um, I don't know, I wouldn't have used, uh, yeah, you can use linear sketch pattern if you want, but you're going to have to kind of massage it a bit, work work it, but I have a fully defined sketch, it looks pretty good. I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to extrude it 35 inches. Now, 
mid plan okay and that's what I have um, so what's next let's have a look um, I'm gonna take easy stuff I'm gonna take um, should we do the shell first now let me think for a second yeah okay let's have a look I'm gonna put these f I think I want to put these radiuses these fillets of two inches on either edge and what will happen is it's gonna run all the way along here you'll see what I mean so we will get a fillet of two inches and I'm gonna click this edge and look what happens it follows it all the way along because of the tangent propagation and I'm gonna do the same here I'm gonna go okay now this this looks like somebody said to me that this is believe it or not is a soap holder and you'll see what I mean so if this is a soap holder I need to be able to sh I need to be able to cut out the inside of it so we're going to use something called shell and I think I'm pretty sure I've shown you this before now the shell thickness is going to be one inch and I'm going to shell that now and look at this it gives me a nice little um, I don't know, pocket or it basically shells the outside whenever you're using the shell this this area here will remove that face if I if I delete that and I go okay it's still after shelling it but it's after doing the interior of it like so okay so let's go back here for a sec and let's remove that face now what's next I'm going to take this cutout and I'm going to take that cutout so it's 25 and it's a depth of two inches and it's right bang in the middle so let's create a sketch right there you could do it if you wanted to be good you could put it on probably on one of those mid planes so this point that line at that point we're going to midpoint it we make this 25 excuse me again <coughs> You don't make videos in spring. All right, two inches, and then extrude cut through all, and I'll just cut that out like so. All right, I'll create another sketch here. I'm hitting the space bar to get that, that menu to come up, and I'll just draw another rectangle. Now I think it's 20 this time. So I'll click this line, I click the point, I'll go midpoint, and I'll go 20, and I'm pretty sure that the depth of it is 2 as well. Exit the sketch, extrude cut, go through all, and now we have that. Now what else are we missing? Um, the last thing we're actually missing are these feet on the end. Now, let's have a look. Okay. The best way to do this is create a plane that's 10.5 away from the top. So I'm going to create a plane. Oops, not there. Let's try that again. From that face, we want an offset of 10.5. 10.5 flip and we're going to extrude up to the surface so there's that plane I'm going to create a sketch on that plane and I'm going to look at this normal too and I'm going to create some circles one two three see I'm after adding a mate uh, some sort of a can I move the I, I can't good good all right I'll highlight them all and I'll go equal and I'll go from this to there I'll make that horizontal from this point to whoops let's try that again from that point to this point we we'll make it vertical from that point to that point we we'll make it horizontal and from that point 
to that point we'll make it vertical. Alright, and I'll highlight them all and I'll make them equal to one another. I think I've done that already. But what size is it? Um, I'm trying to think. We have a diameter of one inch, okay? Which is from there to there. This will make a bit of sense now in a sec. One inch. Very small. And then what do we need? It's 3.5 from one end. Let's have a look. 3.5 from one side and then 28. So, come on now, let me, from there to there, we'll make a 28, and then we'll make it from one to the other. We'll make a 3.5. Okay, and then I remembered 44. And that 44 is from whenever I'm clicking a circle I don't waste my time trying to get to the center point I'm just clicking on the outside and I go to the outside to the outside and I make that 44 and then I need one more dimension I have the the tree so if you you're looking at this from the f for the first time, I'm after doing this problem about ten times now. So I, c I remember where these dimensions are, but it would you would it would you would need to take your time to figure out all these things. Okay, so I'm kind of doing the work for you. So from there to there, we make that three, and everything goes black. Now what we're going to do now is this has. It starts off small and it gets wider. It has a tapered extrude of 10 degrees. So I'll exit the sketch, I'll extrude all right, a draft 10 degrees, okay wrong way, draft outwards and what we're going to do is we're going to go up to next. So what it does is it just keeps driving until it reaches that face. And now we have these lovely little feet on our on our soap tray. Now, the last thing is there's little fillets on it and their radius of 0.25. So we get fillets, 0.25. One, two, three, four. Now let me let me have a look at this thing. So what's new there? Um, this wavy business, trying to get that curve, is tricky enough. Um, that's something probably that, that you, we've never really spent. We spent a bit of time on it, but but it's it's going to be tricky for you. The second thing is the um, the shell. So practice with that shell. You it's something that you need to know, and you you are going to see it in the associate uh, exam. Uh, the draft extrude is something you're going to see. Um, so make sure those three things, um, make sure you can get the tangents between the curves. You're going to see all of those things on the exam for sure. So make sure you know what you're doing. Um, that's it. Is there anything else missing? So once you're done with this, create the drawing. Okay, you're going to create the drawing of every single part. Okay, so let's look at problem number two. Um, so it's it's a, it looks like some sort of a lawn chair. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use something called a 3D sketch. So let me just show you. So I'll create a part. Um, I'll create it now. Hold on, what am I doing here? Slow down for a sec. A lot of time you guys uh, mistakenly you create this 3D sketch when we've been when we just need sketches for 99% of everything that we do. For once, we're actually going to use a 3D sketch. So what do you do? We, we click on 3D sketch and this comes up. Now, let's have a look. Let me show you a few things here first. Um, the first thing you'll notice is we have X, Y, and Z. Now, 80. These are big, big numbers. Okay, 80. Okay. 
um, it's one millimeter okay so let's do this first let's go and let's change this to mean millimeters now let's do this again 3d sketch now what I'm going to do is there's my origin right there I'm going to grab a line and don't be scared um, and I'm going to start from the origin okay now let me see if I can remember what this thing looks like the origin in this example is going to be right where the, so this is like you see that piece right there the origin is going to be right in the midpoint of that okay so remember that right there so I need to come over and then over in this direction to so see if I can remember this okay now watch this look how it locks there okay it locks on to the X it locks on to the Y okay I need to come over here a little bit so the plane that I'm drawing in see notice how it says X Y beside my pencil if I hit the tab key I'm now on a different plane I'm on Y Z so now I can lock on somewhere like there I'm trying to come over here but it won't lock in I hit the tab key and then I can lock lock in there I'm hitting the tab key again now let me let me just stop what I'm doing and show you what it looks like in 3d space so how do I change the planes I'm using the tab key so let's hold, hold on for one second so what does this thing look like it looks like I need to come over now forget about the fillets the curves for the time being. Let's, I'm going to press escape. Okay. Now I'm going to come back. I'm going to grab a line. I'm going to come back to this point. Okay. See, notice that it doesn't lock on. I hit the tab key and it locks on. I hit the tab key again. Tab key. I don't need to hit the tab key because I'm in the right plane for once and I'm, I'm going to be in the right plane again so look at this here now what can I do I'm going to look at some dimensions here for a sec 80 millimeters so I'm going to go from you from there to there I'm going to make that 80 now what I'm going to see if I can do is I'm going to see if I can delete that line I'm going to delete that line I'm going to put a line in between them And I'm going to go this line, and you, I'm going to make you a midpoint. Okay, now it wants to slow down for a sec. Can I go along X? No, it doesn't like that. Along Y? No, along Z. Okay. You're going to have to play around with this a little bit. Um, so I got the 80. Let's have a look. Now we need this to be 100. So I'll make this 100. Now I can make this line and this line equal. I can make this line and this line equal. And this line and this line equal. And you two as well. Equal. Okay, that's 100. What's next? 85 and then 85 and then 85 here as well okay And then this height, I'm zoning off here a little bit, I'm sorry. Um, so what we have, we have a straight piece and then we have an angular piece. So we have a straight piece. And then we have an angular piece like that. Something like that, okay. And then we do the same over here. Now, if you, if you draw something like this, It looks right, doesn't it? But let's look at it from an angle. No, you're not on the right plane. You're gonna, you're gonna have lots of fun trying to figure that out. Okay. So what am I looking at? 
I know that, that that X and Y is in the right plane. So I know if I draw this back here like so, it's gonna be it's gonna be in the right orientation is the word I'm looking for. So hold on. <coughs> okay, let's get some dimensions going. So we have um I'm looking for some sort of height. 170 is what I want. So from the very bottom to the top is 170. Okay. Um, so from there to there is 170. And I think I just have to do the same on the other side. So from there to there is 170. I know you don't like extra dimensions. And then look, let's look at the angle. It looks like the length of this is 26.5. I'll make this and this chappy equal and then we need uh, an angle what's the angle 20 degrees where am I getting that from right there twenty degrees and there and he's twenty degrees now what's what can I do with this? I move, what's happening with that? It's moving along the 3D space. So I need to do something. I need to. I can't fix him. Can I move him along the X? No, it doesn't like that. Move along the Y. It doesn't like that. And then move along the Z. It doesn't like that either. Okay. Um, what happens with this point? How can I lock that in? And look, it's fine the way it is. Um, hmm. I'd like this to be along the Y or along. No. Okay, well, let me let me get back to that for a sec. Bloody three D sketches. Um, and let's put some of these fillets in. Radius 10, typical. Okay. So what we'll do, we'll get a fillet of 10. Now watch this. I'll put one in there. Put one in there. Just go, yes, don't worry about it. Look, I'm not going to lie. We're going to leave that. We're going to just suck it up and deal with it. It's fine. I'm just trying to show you... What a, what a sweep is and I'm getting bogged down with 3D sketches so I'm just going around and adding all these fillets like so and I go okay very very nice okay now watch this that's a 3D sketch very very different from what we've done what we'll do now is we're going to create something called a sweep and in order to do the sweep I need to create a sketch that's perpendicular to the <laughs> to the path. So I go to exit out of the sketch. I go plane. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> oh my god. Click the line. Click the point. And I have a plane that's completely perpendicular to that line. And then I'm going to create a sketch on that plane. And if we go to the to here, we see that this is a pipe. It's not a, a it's not a, um, a rod or a solid piece. So the thickness is one millimeter, and it's a diameter of five. So let's do a diameter of five. And then let's do an offset, give it a thickness of one, like so. Don't try to do a sweep unless this sketch is perfectly at the end of the line and it's perpendicular like so. Okay, now watch this. Whenever you're trying to do a sweep, you have two sketches. You have a profile, which is this guy. And you have a path, 
which is the other one. The profile will follow along the path. So what do I do? We go to the sweep. Okay. The profile is you can select it here if you want to, or I can just do this. And the path is that. And look what it does, it just follows along it. And that's it. So whenever you think of a sweep, you have a profile and you have a path. And your path doesn't have to be a 3D sketch. It can just be a normal sketch, you know? So um, anyway, let me show you an example of a normal sketch. So we just delete that for a sec. That's it. So hopefully you can do that. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete all this. Excuse me. I'm going to create a sketch on the top plane. And I'm going to draw a couple of lines. Just a normal sketch. And I'm going to put fillets on it. Like so. Now what, what do I do here? Um, I'm going to have, okay, let's exit out of this. I'm going to have to put in uh, a plane. And I'm going to put it in like so. I'm going, to kind of, I'm going to put it in the intersection. And I'm going to create a sketch on that plane. And I'm just going to, don't do that, let's try that again. Something like this. Let's see, does this work? Two sketches. I'm going to do sweep boss base. There's my profile. And here's my path. And it'll just follow along. Just like so. Um, let's do this. Let me show you something else. Let's remove... Can I remove the fillets? Uh, I don't think so. What happens if I don't have fillets there? Um, I'll delete that. Let's just delete all this. Excuse me for a sec. All right. I'll create a sketch. On the top plane. Just something like that. I'll get out of here. I think the sweep will still work. Um reference geometry, I'll cr create a plane, click on the point, click on the line, we create a sketch on that plane, yeah, there you go, I'm surprised that worked, yeah, there it is, okay, so sweep, um, it's very, very useful when you're doing, like you can create cables, wires, um, where else would you see it? Um, it's it's rare enough, um, the sweep feature. So, okay, uh, what are we going to move on to next? We're going to move on to this bottle. Okay, so we did the first two. We'll move on to this bottle. So give me a sec. Hey, uh, let's have a look at problem number three. So we're going to we're going to do this bottle, and so let's have a look. The first thing it's in millimeters. So let's remember that. Um, how are we going to do this? The bottle has three sections. It has a rectangular or a square base with fillets on it that gets extruded 60. Then it has a tubular top that comes down 40. And then it has this shape that connects the tube to the square essentially. And that's what a loft is. We're going to use a loft feature for that. So this is just this section here is going to be just a normal extrude. That section there is going to be a normal extrude. And from here to here is going to be a loft. Now, that's going to give us a solid bottle. But we want to put, I don't know, wine or something inside of this thing. So we're going to have to use a shell to shell the inside of it out. So, let's, let's give this a go. Let's turn this on and make sure that it's millimetres. And let's create a sketch on the top plane. I'm going to be, I'm going to use a center rectangle. A 
Now let's have a look at these dimensions. Um, 40 and then a radius of 5. So this is 40. I'll make this line and that line equal to one another. And I've already forgotten it. Is it radius of 5? Okay, let's try that. One of these days I'll actually read this, but you know you don't need to worry about it. It'll just put the radius of 5 in there. Okay. So that's that. Now we, we're going to extrude this by 60. So let's rotate this a little bit, get a good eye view on it. And let's extrude this of 60 millimeters and go OK. Alright, so there's that bottom section. Now this top, I want to do the top section next and I'm going to connect them with a loft. So I need to come up 130. So what will I do? I'm going to get a plane from there I'll make this 130 and there you go that's the top of the bottle so let's create let's create a sketch on there and let's make two circles do we need two circles no we just want one circle for the time being we're going to use a shell later so what's the top of it a diameter of 20 diameter 20 and I'm going to extrude this by 130 minus 90 is 40 like so okay now the next thing is the loft so hopefully I'll give you I'll give you a better I'll give you some background in lofting but let's let's have a look in class but let's have a look here so we know extrude, we know revolve, we know sweep. Don't worry about this boundary ball space. I don't think I've ever used that before. Extruded cut. I even think this is new to be quite honest. We know extruded cut, we know hole wizard, we know revolve cut, you know, we know fillet, we know a linear pattern, and we know most of these. So let's the last big thing we don't know is this loft. And what a loft does is I'll show you. I'll I'm gonna click so much of this you don't need to know more advanced stuff. I'm going to click one face and then I'm going to click another face and look what it does, it just joined one face to another face. Um, where do you see this type of thing? If you, looked up the, if you look at the ductwork above your heads where you have air conditioning you sometimes have sheet metal that goes from a tube to a square or, or, or a pipe to a square or different from one square to another square. Um, so there you go, that's it. And if that gives you grief, another thing you can do is you can create a sketch on this face. I'll click on it and I'll go convert to entities. That's one sketch. Sketch at one I have a single sketch, then I'm gonna do another sketch. And I'm gonna convert to entities to get the geometry and exit. Before you before I don't know this is a relatively uh, this loft here you can just click faces and it does it but before you actually had to have dedicated sketches so one sketch to another so I'll show you now we have two sketches sketch three and sketch four and it does the exact same thing now hold on for one second okay um what was I going to say so what does it do is it creates a feature that that tries to form from one type of face to another type of face um, you also get these connection points that you can grab and you can move these and what it will do is it will twist the free form shape um, typically you don't mess with those very very rarely unless they're incorrect unless the thing has done it, it should do a good job of doing it and this is going if I go okay it's just going to give this a very straight loft a free form loft um, and this is not going to have any twist in it if you leave it the way it is. Um, so what do we do next? We're going to put in some fillets. I think. Yeah, you can see the fillets there. Now what size are the fillets? 15. Okay. Now we have a nice solid bottle. 
Now I need to make, I need to shell this. You can see if I, if I section it, it's completely solid. Now if I go to shell, now what's the thickness of this thing going to be? It's going to be one millimeter. If I click this top view, this top face, and go OK, I have a nice bottle there with a shell. If I wanted, if I wanted this, if this was some sort of, I don't know, um, what it actually reminds you of as a wind tunnel, but let's say we wanted flow going right through this, I would remove this face as well, and now we have a nice, some nice ductwork. Okay, so we have a, uh, a square going to a cylindrical, um, I don't know, cross section. Okay, um, so let's let's do it the way it is and let's remove that second face if you wanted to show off you could um, you could render this like let's let's I can't turn on uh, I don't have re I don't have real view or photo view 360 on this thing it's only a laptop but when you what you could do is you could render this and make it look quite nice so that's it we just did a little loft there and we're gonna do a few more okay let's look at the next one we're gonna do a funnel so what's the best way of doing this? We have a circle at the bottom, we have a circle in the midsection, and then we, we have an ellipse. So we're going to make this all solid, and then we're going to um, shell it. So let's have a look. Now let's look at these dimensions. It looks like millimeters as well. Okay. So I'll change this to millimeters. What I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to create a sketch on the top plane, and I'm just going to draw a circle. Now, what size is it? It's going to be 10, which is right there. Okay. And let's rotate that a little bit, and I'm going to do another. I'm going to create an order. I need to create another sketch, but it's going to be what is it going to be 40 from here to here okay so let's turn on the top plane for a sec I'm going to create come on now create a plane and make that 40 now why is it being a pain there is it really that high 40 okay and then I'm going to create a sketch on that plane and I'm going to create a bigger circle. Now what size is the bigger circle? Diameter 20. Alright, we're going from a small circle to a big circle. I'll just turn that plane off and then the next one is going to be 125 up so I click on this top plane go to reference geometry plane and I'll make this 125 and I'm going to go OK now on this plane we're going to create another sketch and what is it what shape are we going to draw we're going to draw an ellipse so I click the orange in the center of the ellipse I click the maximum of one one side and then I click the maximum of we could say the X and then the maximum of the Y now let's just make sure that these two are okay that's fine now what's the distance between 120 and 80 are the numbers that I need so from here to there is 120 try that again 120 And then from there to there is 80. Now why isn't this locking in? Let's see if I can pick it. Okay, so it wants to rotate. So what I'll do is I'll make this point and the origin vertical. And it, it, it locks in. So now I have, watch this, I have three, I'm going to turn that plane off. I have three sketches. I want to go from there to there to there now watch this if I go to loft and I just pick these two there's one and there's two 
it gives me a nice loft but look how it's actually putting that that turn on it that twist on it uh, that's kind of a pain all right that's not what we want anyway that's what a loft will do now that's that's what a loft can do with just two sketches so i'm just going to go from here to there to there now don't put a twist on it ah it does look at that how it wants to twist it um I'm going to get out of this for a second, see what I can do. Did you see what I just did there? Um, I think where, where I click, I'll, I'll do it again, loft. If I click over here, and then I click there, yeah, see, it picks that point with whatever, and I can move that to kind of take, to manually take the twist out of it, that control point. And then go to there. Okay. So really do your best to try and not have any major, major twists. With it. This is what it ends up with. I don't know if you can see that. So what do I, what will I do? I'm going to go loft. I'm going to click on that. It, it wants to, let's, let's see what it does. Yeah. It puts a twist in it for some reason. There we go. And to there. This is why it's called free form shapes. They're free forming. Um, now, so we have a nice funnel there to, to when you're putting your oil into your car, you don't spill it everywhere. What's next? Um, is that what it looks like? Yeah, it's quite sharp. Okay, what can I do? I don't know if I want to get into this now. I can click that sketch. And I can do... I don't know, normal to profile. I don't know if I want to get into this now. No, I don't. I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And I'm going to. the next thing I'm going to show is just the shell. So we know that the thickness is, uh, is 1. And I'm going to pick one face there. And the second face there. Okay, that's it. You have your funnel. Um, okay, that's it. I'll move on to the next one. Hey, I'm back. Um, we're going to work on problem number five now. So we're going to draw this screwdriver. Um, what features have we got? The first feature is a revolve, which is the handle of the screwdriver. The shaft of the screwdriver is just a simple extrude, and then the tip of it is going to be a loft. So we're going to go from one sketch to another sketch to another sketch. So we're going to use um, a loft for that. And then if we're in the mood, we're going to cut out some, um, I don't know what we're going to call it, grooves. And then we're going to use an angular array or a rotational array to array it around the screwdriver. I don't know if I have a nice um, Stanley screwdriver that has got, it looks just like it. So... Um, the first feature is uh, this revolve, so we can just start with that. All right, let's have a look. It's in inches. So I'll create a sketch on the top plane, and let's do this. Where's the origin going to be? The origin. I'm just going to make this the origin right here, that point right here. So I need six point five. Let's try that again. Six point five. I'm gonna go away from the object and come back. I'm gonna come down. I can't remember what this thing looks like. Away and come back. Something like that. Now, I have no idea if it even looks like that, but let's have a look. Okay, it does actually, I'm surprised. All right, not bad. All right, 6.5. These two lines are going to be tangent. Um, this point and this point are going to be collinear, I think. And uh, what is it? It's a radius of 7.5. So let's get that going. Radius 
7.5 and then the length is 6.5 okay from one end to the other end 6.5 now uh, this radius here is one inch okay radius one inch that seems very big and I I'm pretty sure this point isn't lined up here radius one inch okay so what are we gonna have to do with this let's pull this why does it not want to move there we go so this center of this arc comes out a little bit hmm. Now I'm trying to move this out now. Why won't this come with me? Let me just get rid of that. Okay, that's what drives that point. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to talk to you guys and think at the same time. So now it's fixed again. Okay, one inch is the radius. Um it's one point five from here and then one point seven five. So let's see if we can do that. This is 0.75. Good, that's good, I like that. And then what is it from there to there? 1.5. Oh, that's it, and it goes all black. That's it, so we have our first sketch. Let's get rid of this little tail here, and we'll revolve it. Okay. <clears throat> so our axis of revolution is gonna be this line here. 360 degrees and that's it that seems like a big grip there but anyway it is what it is um, we we'll create a sketch on here and we'll just get our shaft going now what's the diameter going to be it's going to be half an inch decent sized screwdriver 0.5 and we'll Extrude it. What 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 do we extrude it? We we'll extrude it shaft length. Does it tell us what the hell the length is? Seven inches from end to end, and then what's this? Five inches. So just the shaft length is five inches. Okay. First feature revolve. Second feature extrude. The third feature is going to be the loft. So let's get a. One inch away from there, there's going to be um, a profile sketch. So let's get a plane. I'll click this face and I'll go one inch. Right. I'll get another plane from there. I'm going to make it two inches. Now, just one reference is all you need, and there's going to be an offset of two inches. Not from this plane. So let's Delete that reference, click on this face, and it's going to be two inches from there. So it's one inch to there and one inch to there. So we have two reference planes. So let's have a look. Um, we have two rectangles, two simple rectangles. So I'll create a sketch on this plane. I'll look at it normal too. I'm after hitting the space bar. I'm going to get a center rectangle. And look at that, there's one. Now what are the dimensions? It looks like it's whew, point 0.1 from the center to there. So this profile is a point 0.1 offset of the tip. Hmm. So I'm or missing some dimensions here. Point 0.5. Gotta hate that. This is a half an inch. So it's this one's going to buy. We're just going to have to make it up. We'll make this distance here unless I'm completely missing it. Okay, this profile is a point 0.1 offset of the tip. So it's point. Okay. So it's point 0.1 in this direction and point 0.1. So it's going to be point 0.7. So this is going to be point 0.7. Now what's the height going to be? The height's going to be 0 
So if it's an offset of the tip, it's 0 0.1 in this direction and 0 0.1 in this direction. Added to that original one, so we get point this height from there to there is only 0.3 of an inch. That's some a pretty shitty way to dimension the drawing, but anyway. So we have that. That's our we have one profile sketch. This is our second and our third profile sketch. So let's create a sketch on this plane. And I'll go normal to again. And we'll draw a little rectangle. A centre rectangle. And I'll go point one. And then what's this? I'm thinking it's point three, I can't remember. Point five, right here. Now let's see how this works out. I'm not I'm not so sure. Okay. Let's turn off these planes, just, just let's hide them. And let's see what happens. We're gonna go features loft. I'm gonna click this sketch, then that, and then that. Now look how these control points are kind of all in the same place. And I can move it if I want to. Very rare I've never moved them, okay? You can add twist to things. You don't want to do that. Okay. Now there it is. Um, let me just show you one thing, see if I can do this. A screwdriver. Now what's happening here? Let's let's see if I can get it from the side. No, we don't want that. Okay. This wouldn't be a very good screwdriver. We want it. It's we want it coming ninety degrees and then bending up. So how do we do this? Okay, now I, I you we would teach this in an advanced class, but if I open up Start End Constraints, I can click on that sketch, and I can go End Constraint. I can go Normal to Profile, and look what it does. Now I, I'm not going to lie; I'm kind of happy that that worked out. I thought it would backfire on me. Now why did I pick Start Constraint? I'm guessing is this sketch here, because that's where it started. This is the end, and I can do, pick different ones. I can just go Default like it is. And then I can go a direction vector. Now I'd have to give that, and I'm not going to go there. Normal to profile is just going to come out of that night at 90 degrees. Okay, so that that kind of looks good. Um, so let's go okay with that. Yeah. Okay. So. Funky looking screwdriver, but but look, there's the loft at the end. Now let's see if we can get um, some sort of a groove going. Now what's the best way of doing that? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. What's the best way? If I click on the right plane and I create a sketch on that. Okay. Okay. And. I'm going to look at this from the side. I'm going to draw. I'm going to click on this edge and I'm going to go convert entities. And let's put a circle in here. Let's put a circle in here. We'll make them both the same. Now this isn't in the drawing that I've given you. We're just we're just we're just making it up. And I'll just to show you some stuff. I'm going to make this 0.325. And let's put a dimension between each one. We'll make it 2.5. And then from this line to the circle, we'll make it half an inch. And what will we do? Then we're going to go from here to there. And I'm going to just trim some of this stuff away. I'm going to trim that bit of it away, that bit of it away. Um, there and there. There. And there, what am I going to do? Hopefully, you can see what I'm trying to do here. I'm going to do a revolve, and let's see what this looks like. A revolve cut. So, I've got sketch there, kind of in the right place. I'm going to go revolve cut. And now I have a kind of a nice groove in the screwdriver to grip, into, grip onto. Now, if I want to array that around, hopefully, you know this, I'm going to go to circular pattern. And my axis of revolution is going to be this, that any of these cylindrical axes will do. But let's not go crazy. Let's go equal spacing. And let's put maybe 10 in. Now 
Now we could make that groove a little bit longer, but that's pretty good now. It's also nice to have a, a ball at the end of a screwdriver. It can be can help with um, if you want to play extra torque and things. So let's say we want to we want to um, render this in some way. Let's let me save it first. So I'm going to save this as a freeform screwdriver, and I'm going to open up my appearances. And let's say we were doing a design for, I don't know, an industrial designer and he wanted us to render this thing. What would we do? So let's have a look. Metal. And I'm going to go steel. And I'm going to go polished steel. And let's get just, not the whole screwdriver, just the extrusion. And I'm going to do the same with this. Just with that extrusion. Okay. Now what about this? We're going to make this plastic, a black plastic. So let's minimize the metal. Let's get the painted going. Rubber maybe, metal, plastic. There you go. Hot medium gloss. White medium gloss plastic. Let's drag this down. Black medium gloss plastic. And we'll do the whole revolve. Alright. Now if you've ever seen a nice good Stanley screwdriver the, the grooves are always yellow. So watch this. Can I do this? Oh, I love it. Watch this again. Let's see how I can just drag it into here as well. And that's it. Nice re A nice rendered screwdriver. Okay, I'm going to go to Ambient Occlusion. I have no idea what the hell this is and um, what it does. So we go Add-ins. Photo View 360 if you're lucky enough to have it on your machines. Render Tools. Um, preview Window. Don't do this integrated preview if you have a slow computer it's going to slow it down. Make sure you save your work before you start rendering because it does have the potential to crash your machine. Check that out. Beautiful, okay. Options. A thousand by a thousand pixels, JPEG is good. Leave these preview render quality. If you have a fantastic machine, it's really expensive, you can boot it up to maximum. I don't. So um, let's have a look here. We go final render. So I don't think you're going to want to hear, listen to me talk over this thing. But let's see, let's see how long it takes. It should take maybe. It's going to take about one minute. So look, it's doing its thing. This this white, this background is easy. It takes about one second. And then it takes a little bit more time here. Anyhow, I think you know what you're doing. Look, it's with, with, with PhotoView 360, it's very, very easy to get high quality renderings. Um, you know, I've actually done it a few times in different for different companies, you know, and they want to see what a, a design is going to look like at the end. You can forecast and say, look, it's going to look something like this. This is how it's going to look like. So anyway, something to practice. Okay, um, there's a nice job on the screwdriver. Um, okay, I'm going to move on to the next. What is the next one? We have the screwdriver done, and we have a nice chair. Okay, so we'll work on that chair now in a, couple of minutes, in a minute or two. Okay, let's have a look at um, problem number, what is it? Well, it's a chair problem anyway, so I think it's problem number six. Um, I think there's a lot of different ways you could do this. I gave this as a, a fine, I think it was a final exam in another class. But the thing, you see this L shape, the, just the chair section. So essentially you've like this chair section and then you've got two arms. And the two arms are they're the same, they're symmetrical. So the chair is a simple L shape and then it has what I would consider like a taper or a draft at the front of it and a taper and a draft at the top. What you could do is you could do, what we'll do is this, we'll do the L shape first. We'll do one taper using a loft and the second taper I will try doing a, a, a draft extrude to show two different ways and hopefully one of them will work. Now once that's done what we'll do is we will do the arms. 
Now the, I think the easiest way of doing the arms is probably just a simple sweep. Um, so that's my plan. So let's start with the L shape and ho I'm hoping I have all the dimensions. Um, I think I do. Anyway, let's look at these things. 68, let's, let, we'll make it out of um, inches. So, new part. And my origin is going to be this, just this point right here. So what is it? It looks like it's 30 by... Okay, let's see now. No. Um, at this point here, I got 43 to there, 25, 48. I know that this is 8 from the... Let's, okay, let's see here. So I need to know what this dimension is here. 30. I'm get is this an L shape? Is it a perfect um hmm. Give me one second. Alright. So I'm just gonna draw this out. Look, I think there's a dimension missing or I'm my head's pretty melted. Okay. So there's my L shape. Okay, now what's the height of this chair? Uh, eight inches, eight, and then do we have it eight and eight? Okay. Eight. Now I can do, I'm right clicking on my mouse and I'm just moving up to get a quick dimension. And eight, there, okay. All right, now what's the height of this from there to there? The height is 38. No, it's 30. From to to the to the bottom of the taper. Now this looks longer, so I'm going to have to see if I can figure this out. It's less than you can see from the end for very very edge. It's forty, so I'm guessing that's about three inches or maybe two inches. So we're just going to make that thirty eight. We're going to make from that. F let let me zoom in here a little bit for you. From that face there. To the to the start of the taper, we're going to make it 38. And if I can figure out later, I'll change the dimension. And I'm going to do a mid-plane extrude. So let's exit the sketch. We'll do a mid-plane extrude. And what is it? It's a mid-plane extrude of 40. Okay, there's the first feature. Now, we'll do it. We'll do it. Uh, a nice tapered edge here at the front. Now it comes out a total of um, a total of eight at the front. So I'll go plane. I'll click on the face. I'm going to do an offset plane of eight inches. Okay, and I'll create a sketch on that. Plane, and I look at this normal too, and I'll draw a rectangle. And let's have a look. I'm pretty sure this dimension is five, but let's check it. Five, and we have thirty-seven. Thirty-seven and five. Okay, I'm going to draw a center line. Go on. Let's get the mid plane. From there to there, mid midpoint, and now I can make that that construction line line up with that, and I'll make that coincident. And then what else can I do if I want to set? If I want to have this, what's the quickest way? I know that that's eight. I can go from that center to that center, and then just make that horizontal, and it'll it'll bring it down couple of different ways of doing that so it just keeps that that rectangle centered on that rectangle okay let's get out of here and then let's get our loft so I'll go loft and I'll click on one face right and then I'll click on the sketch look at that easy and I go okay and that's it let's turn off that plane okay 
and let's see if we can do this. Um, see, in order to do an extrude, a draft extrude, I need to know what the angle is. So I would need to know what that angle is. Um, so if it's 30, if it's 8 going down to 5, and it's got a height of 8, yeah. And you can, if you know, if you know what this angle is, it looks like about 5 degrees, you could do a 5 degree loft. I'll show you what I mean. Um, I, I should be able to figure that out easy enough. Anyway, I'll create a sketch on that face. And I click on the face and I go convert entities. Just extract the geometry. And I go extrude. And we want an extrude of 8. But we don't know. And then I'm going to click here for a, a draft. But we don't know what that angle is. Is it 5 degrees? On either side? Ah, sure, this is easy. Watch this. I go evaluate, measure. And I go from you to you. And I go, right, what's the angle? angle 169.38 so it's 180 minus that 169.38 so watch this I'm after copying and pasting that and I'll go hold on 180 minus 169.38 so it's roughly 10 degrees and now I have the same um, I have the same type of draft or same type of taper on it. The easiest way would have just been to do two lofts. So that's one way. I'm after using a, a draft there, a draft extrude. Now let me see if I, can I lift this up and let's try something else. Can I copy and paste this loft? If I go control, okay, I'll click, I'll right click here, no. I'll click that and I'll go control C. It doesn't seem to let me do that. If I click on that face and go control V, no. I wish I could copy that feature. No, it doesn't like it. Um, anyway, there, there, either way will work. You could create a second loft up there. I'm actually surprised I could, get, I could get that draft extrude to work. Now, what's next? The next thing is this sweep. So, we're going to need a... Th are we going to use a 3D sketch? I don't think we're going to use a 3D sketch. We're going to come out... Um, from the center is 20 and then we know the thickness of this is diameter 4 so if I want to get to the very center of that so from the very center plane out to there it's going to be 22 40 divided by 2 plus diameter 4 so it's a radius of 2 so watch this 22 is the number so from the front plane I create an offset plane of 22 and on that plane, I'm going to create a sketch. Ah, don't be like that. There we go. Alright, what does it look like? It just comes up a curve, a straight line, three straight lines and a curve. So I'll just start somewhere around here. I'll come up. Don't lock into anything in the chair. Walk away. Come back. Check that out. Okay, is it something like that? Yeah, okay, so I'm putting this in the wrong place. This line is in the wrong place. It's somewhere in here. Now, so let's put in some relations. This point and that point are going to be horizontal. These two are going to be tangent. Um, let's have a look at some dimensions. It's going to be a radius of 15. Okay, uh, some dimensions. 55 from the very bottom to the center. Lovely. All right, um, 55, we got 35 here. And then 43 to the very, very front. That's the dimension that I need. 43, and then I can work my way back. Yeah, that's the dimension I needed. 43, yeah. Okay, 35 and then 43. 
So from there to there is what? 35. And from here, that's tricky. There to there is 43. And that gives us, it gives us that. Um, we need some height relation. 40. Mm, so do we have 68 minus 38 will leave us 30. From there to there is going to be 30. So from there to there is going to be 30. And then how far does this stick out? Um, 43. And then it says 48 from here to here. Now let's see. Okay, 48. So from there to there we make that 48. That's it. Okay. Okay, let's... I'll, I probably should put that up for a second or two so you can see it. So I didn't use a 3D sketch, I'm just using a normal 2D sketch. Now watch this. No, don't turn it off, we need that. Let's turn off that plane. Look where it lies. Now we need... Um, you know, I need to put a sketch... This is my path. I need a profile. So I need to put that profile perpendicular to any of those lines. It doesn't matter which one. It really doesn't matter. So watch this. I'll just go um, plane. I'll click on the line. And then I'll click on the point. And look look where this sketch is. It's perfectly perpendicular with the line at the end point. And I'll go OK. And then I'll create a sketch on that plane. And I'll draw a circle. And what's the thickness of that tube? It's four inches, that's a pretty massive chair. Um, pretty hardcore. And I just lock it in, it needs to touch the end of that line. And I'll go OK. Now rem remember, this is the profile and that's the path. So let's turn the planes off and go to features, sweep, profile. Is it going to be this chap? The path is going to be. Now, good, it, it's it's. What is it? This pops up when SolidWorks gets a little bit confused. Basically, if I go if I go OK, it's going to drive that sweep up to here. Now, what this white button is asking me, it's saying, look, what does it say? Tangent. If I click on this tangent, it should follow the whole way around. Is it going to do that? Yes. Good, good man. OK, it gets that. I can also do something like select open loop. I can go this. And this, now it's, I don't know if it's going to like this actually. I'm going to just, okay, what happens if I want to select multiple ones? I can select that. Yeah, it's not, yeah, now let's see, does it give me this? Okay, it doesn't like that because this is a break. So let's turn that one off and let's go okay. And we got that. Now look at this. I'm going to go back to this sketch, this profile sketch. No, I don't think it's going to like that. Um, what happens if I put a second one on there? It's going to get confused, I think. Yeah, it didn't like that. It's looking for just one profile and now it has two. So if I go edit feature and I go, we don't want to do that sketch. We just want to do this circle there. No. Now what happens if I right click and I go selection manager? And I just go select close loop. It just does that one. And then I can go OK. And then I'll what watch this. I'll share this sketch and I'll do another sweep. And I'm gonna right click. If I if I select that it does both of them because they are part of the sketch. If I right click and I go selection manager and I go just I just I'm just I'm gonna select a region kind of an open loop, I just want this one and I'm going to go OK now it's just after picking this one loop now if I go right click now and I go select some selection manager and I go select open loop I can just do that one and now I'll have that and I'll turn off that sketch that's pretty, ah you know it's, it's good stuff to know now what will I do, I'm going to mirror this across the front plane and what are we going to do? What features? I'm going to mirror this and I'm going to mirror that. 
and it won't let me do it because now what I wanted if I click on geom geometry pattern feature scope another thing I can do are these are separate bodies now this is a body and that's a body and the reason why they're separate is I don't think I merge them I, or I don't even know if I can so what, what I'll do is instead of mirroring a feature I'm just going to mirror a body and I'll click on this and then I'll go mirror face and I'll go front plane and I'll go OK and it does it so if you have a trouble if you have trouble mirroring features what you should do is try and mirror bodies OK now let's have a look I'm going to have some nice steel legs polished aluminium Let me try that again. All right, and what do we do? See if we can find a nice fabric. So, organic fabric, cloth, white cotton, beige, burgundy. Now, okay. No, don't do that. Render tools, preview window. not too bad all right something to play around um you know it's 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 a pretty poxy looking chair but we've only spent about 15 minutes drawing it up and look what we have you know so um okay i'll stop here i'm going to move on to problem number this last one what is this exercise six so we'll give this exercise six a go this is pretty tough stuff so um I'll t let me take a break and then we'll move on to this one hey i'm back i was talking myself out of doing this one it, it's you know it's not too bad but I, I was thinking you know I was going to just leave it to you and see if you could figure it out but look I may as well do it um, this what you're looking at this is a, a some sort of a sheet metal cover for a, a, a blower a motor blower of some sort so so in this there's there's three sections the first section is a semicircle with these flanges on it, these flat flanges where there's eight holes that bolt it to something. And inside of this pocket here, inside this volume, there's an impeller that rotates like crazy, round and round and round, it's driven by a motor, generates air flow, and it just flows out here like that. So it's going round, 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 comes round here and it just zooms out like that. So it's it's um, the cover of a fan blower. First section is a semicircle, and then you have this. I don't know. I I should know what this is called here. This is a, some sort of a vein or an outlet of some sort, and you can see the there's a transition, and the 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 what is it called? The sectional area increases. Okay, so you have this section here. That's going to be a loft, and then you have the section that connects the outlet to the main section which is all the sheet metal so you have the semicircle one the outlet two and then this this middle section that connects it and then we're gonna have to somehow shell it and then we're gonna have to add the eight holes the first thing we should draw is um, I'm thinking this semicircle business so let's get that semicircle this point is going to be our origin these are all this is I, I took this from a book it's going to be in millimeters um okay so i'll go a new part front plan let's change this to be millimeters before we do anything So what is what's the big one? It, the big one is radius of sixty, and let's get that just radius of sixty. Ooh, um, diameter diameter one hundred twenty. 
I'm going to draw a straight line. Let's make this from there to there. We'll make it midpoint. Let's make it horizontal. And let's put a, a radius of 60 on it. And then we have another circle. And let's make this forty-eight point seven five. Forty-eight point seven five. Okay. So I have the big one, I have the small one. All right. Now this line. Okay. So let's come up here four inches, and let's offset that four. Let's flip it like so and then let's get some lines here some some vertical lines kind of glad I'm doing this now it's not too bad um, and let's just trim that oh don't do that hold on that's good okay and let's just trim this bit as well I'm sorry if I move and kind of fast uh, I want to watch the Game of Thrones tonight, and it's going to come on pretty soon. So, um, 75 to there, and what else? Just 75 to there. This is symmetrical, so 150 from end to end. Now, you're probably asking yourself, how do you get that? I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, but it should be on there. But it's 75 from there. To there, I'll assume that it's symmetrical, so it's 150. So from there to there, we'll make that 150. Very, very nice. Um, let's do some trimming here, and all of that goes. And all of that goes, and all of that goes. So let's make this and that collinear, make that line and that coincident. Um, I need to put a, a center line in here. And I'll make that to there, to there, symmetrical. And then from here to there, we'll make that four millimeters. And it's all black. Let's go back and have a look. Um, so, um, I'm going to, I'm, I'm kind of blagging my way through this. I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of guessing what to do, to do next. I want to, I have that sketch here. I'm going to draw this line in from here to here. I'm going to just extrude that whole thing out for a sec. We'll, we'll do a mid-plane extrude. There and there. Of what is it? It's a mid-plane extrude of 80. And I'll go mid-plane. Okay, we have that much. Do that first. Okay. Now we have that for let's get this this um this other section in this middle section so I'm gonna draw a sketch on this front plane um let's look at normal too look and it looks something like I don't know what the hell it looks like. Walk away and come back to it. Look. Something like something like that. Now let's put some dimensions on it. Radius of a hundred. Oh lovely. Okay, radius of a hundred. 
I'm going to click on this circle. I'm going to go convert to entities. And look at this. This distance from here to here. We're going to, we're going to draw everything until we get to this cutting plane line. We're going to forget that this even exists. We're just getting this midsection done now. It's 42 in height. Forty-two, and then from this center out to here is eighty-one and a half. So I'm going to go from this point to there. I'm going to go eighty-one point five, okay. And then from we have that. I would love a dimension from from here to there, and they're not going to give it to me. So we have to figure it out. 100, 100. Um, okay, radius of 5. So this we know that this is horizontal. And we're going to have a radius of 5. So from there to there. I'm going to click on this and go convert entities again and then trim this bit of it away. Um, make Put in a, a tangent uh, relation there. Okay, and we need some sort of height. What happens if I have a tangent from there to there as well? That sets that. What a pain. Um, radius of 5. And this doesn't help us. What is it? This sucks. I'm thinking here now. What happens if okay, no, no. The radius of five here. Basically, I need, I only need this one dimension. And if I make that a hundred, everything is good. But that's not it. Unless I'm blind. Or I chopped it off or something. I'm going to just, I'm going to make this a hundred and it's going to save us a lot of time. Um... But then it comes down here, what's going on with this? Radius of a hundred. Or let's do this. Let's assume that this point comes all the way down to there. And let's delete that. And let's if I move down I lock that point in at here and I assume that everything goes black. Yeah, so that's what they're saying. This point is is tangent but it locks into it it, it 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 it's also coincident with the end of that line okay sorry about that delay okay now let's have a look and see what that extrusion is it's an extrusion of 57.5 all of this this extrusion is 57.5 so mid plane 57.5 and I'll do a mid plane did you just see that? What I, how I had to look around there and really pull at that drawing. Sometimes it takes time. You could spend a half an hour trying to figure it out, but I have a feeling a lot of you sort of assume that there's dimensions missing. Um, you know, I've given you hundreds of drawings throughout the semester, so sometimes there are dimensions missing. But you have to use your. I suppose you have to use your common sense. But it, sometimes you do have to look at a drawing for a long time to to try and figure it out. So now we have that. Okay. Um, the next thing, next stage is we need to create 
a plane. Now how far is it away from this? It's going to be 57.5 away from that face. And I'll go OK. And I'll create a sketch on that plane. I'll go normal to. And I'll click on this face, that line and that line, and make it collinear. And the distance is 72.5 and 52.5. And 52.5. Now I need... How do I center this up? I can use a center line, so from there to there, and then I can go U, U, and U, I'm going to make them symmetric, and then that centers that right up there. So, exit out of this, and we'll go loft from here. Now here we use our control points. I'll do that again. Turn off the we we'll turn off the plane, and I'll go loft. I'll go this face to there, and we don't have to worry about the control points. And I'll go okay. Right, we're nearly getting there. You're saying to yourself, well, the front of this is all curved, so we need to add some fillets. So what is what is the radius? Radius of fifteen. Okay. Now watch this. I'll get a fillet. I'll make this 15, I'll go 1, not not the face, just the line, there's 1, 2 and it'll follow down, and there, there, and there, okay, look at that, alright, the next thing, um, and that's what that, that those curves are from. A lot of people, when they look at this, they say, what what the hell is going on there? And when you put those fillets in, that's what it looks like. That That's kind of, it will be trial and error. Um, okay. I want to try something. Now we have to shell it somehow. Um, let's go back to this sketch here. Okay, the easy things. Let's put the holes in. I can do that. I'll create a sketch here. Give me one. Uh, yeah, let's just do the holes. Let's do the four holes. Easy. Click on the face. Click on hole wizard. Th we want through holes. And what size are they? They're diameter 4 typical so we're gonna go metric and what size do we want? we want 4 diameter 4 I go positions 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 vertical vertical and I make these horizontal And let's do this. Uh, we have eight, and then eight on the other side, and then ten and twenty. Okay. So from here to there is eight. From there to there is eight. From here to there is ten. From here to here is ten. And from there to there. 20 and from there to there is 20. Let's just tidy up these dimensions. Now I'm, I'm at one bit fast on you there. Now this isn't a dowel hole, it's just a we just want a bloody hole drill size. 
we just want a normal hole there um, the end condition is going to be just through all and then we've got four holes the next thing we want to do is create a sketch on here and we have a circle now what that circle is for is the shaft I'm guessing that, that runs the impeller and it's radius of 15 so it's a diameter of 30 and I'll just go extrude cut through all alright now the next thing is now the next thing is this okay I'm going to create a sketch on the front plane and this is the part I'm kind of blagging my way through but I'll get now I know that there's a, that all of this has a wall thickness of 2.5 so I'm going to do that I'm going to put a dimension between here and there of 2.5 and watch this I'm going to extrude cut in one direction I'm going to do let's see if we can do this up offset from surface very nice I'm going to click on this surface I'm going to offset 2.5 look at that lovely okay and in the other direction I'm just going to go through all now I'm kind of I I think that's what we want there but we don't there's a there's a cover isn't there yeah so let's let's do this we're going to go we're going to go do the same we're going to go offset from surface this surface and I'm going to offset 2.5 and what I've just done there, that's kind of, I've never done that before. Now, imagine an impeller inside there. Is that what's is that what's going on? Because what does this this line here represent? So anyway, let me show you the next bit, the fun bit. Okay, we have all of that. Now I'm going to do a shell, and I'm going to make a two point five thickness, and I click this face. And I click that face and look at this. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So it just creates a, a basically a path for the air to flow through. And let's get a section of this. Beautiful. So that's that's basically it. Um I wouldn't have a clue how that's made, but you know it's a tricky enough part. Um, you know, think about how that was built and practice it and kind of chew it around your head a little bit and see how you see how you get on with it. But uh, you know, tricky enough. Um, you know, if you can if you can look at this and model this and really understand what's going on, you know, you should be pretty proud of yourself. So anyway, that's it with free form parts. Um no new lectures. Um that's it. You're moving on to your final project and um your your SolidWorks Associate Certification Exam. So, please God, no more videos from me. Thanks. Bye.